Hi guys, going to be taking a look at the Pico Connect for the Neo Free Link. The Pico 4 video will follow and I will have some more tips to go with this, but the Neo Free Link um, isn't actually supported on the store, so Pico Connect doesn't show on the Neo Free Link store. The way I've got this is ripping it from my Pico 4 and then installing the APK onto Neo Free Link, and it does work. And I'm going to cover a few um, caveats and pluses to, to this Pico Connect on the Neo Free Link. So straight up, I'm just going to dive straight into this. Launching the applications gives you a similar window to what the Stream Assistant used to look like. But now when you've got your desktop and you connect, you're immediately into your actual desktop. Um, first caveat with this, and this is a bit daft, I can't use a mouse or keyboard plugged into the headset or even by Bluetooth on the Pico 4 or Neo Free Link. Um, that's, I would imagine, going to come, but it's a bit silly that it's not present right now. So... While I have mouse control and I can um, right click and click stuff and open stuff, um, I haven't actually got a keyboard that I can use. I'd have to need a keyboard connected to my PC. Um, so that's a bit daft. So carrying on from the actual Steam VR side of it that everyone's going to be interested in here, um, this is your normal desktop. This is always going to be the view it gives gives you. It doesn't chuck you straight into Steam VR, um, which is quite handy. You have got a big blue button in the top left which says launch Steam VR. that will do the obvious and then the red is the the actual disconnect from your pc using the streaming it puts you back into the connection um, window the connection window itself if i do go back and explain that quickly you have an option of signing in um, on the streamer application and it will notice um, what headsets obviously trying to connect to like the same username and it would automatically boot you in. So if you're on your Wi-Fi and you just want this to load straight into your desktop when you open it, you can configure that to auto-connect. Um, same for the wired connection. I've not tried um, separating the networks. I believe it is still going to need to use your local network, not um, two different networks for sort of remote access. Um, but again, that may later come. So let's go back into the Steam VR interesting part. Devices, it shows up Pika Neo for Link just fine, even though again it's not supported on the store, it won't let me allow uh, allow an install normally. But this is um, working exactly as it normally would. I've put the, the resolution to Ultra um, and it recommends a 3090 here, and I, I believe that's a bit um, bit overkill. I'll go into that in a second. Bitrate 150, this is the max it gives you on the slider for both HEVC and H264. There is a way you can override the bitrate on um, in the configurations. I will do a later video on that for H.264. Um, you really can't push any more on uh, HEVC, really. So night, night hertz, um, 120 hertz isn't an option within this bit. And again, I'm going to go dig in and see if I can get that working um, for a config file for Neo Free Link. Frame buffering and frame inter interpolation. Um, they've got rid of the ASW naming that was confusing people before. It wasn't an actual asynchronous time warp. It was more um, a network side, um, like a recovery side. So frame interpolation, basically um, when the internet connection issues cause drop frames, missing frames will be generated based on existing ones. So that's sort of a backup. The frame buffering is holding the frame back, which is going to um, add into the latency, but then obviously um, make it a bit smoother overall. If you do have a little network jitter, you're not going to notice it. Um, and then frame interpolation is basically when your network properly craps itself, it's not going to make you sick by skipping the headset. So carrying on here, image sharpening, I believe this is on 75% as default. It's a bit much, to be honest. It looks a little bit artificial for me, but that could be because the new Freelink isn't uh, actually properly supported yet. Um, audio, microphone turn on, microphone volume 50%. Default, I would leave that as default, otherwise it's going to be way too loud. And then... Um, you can choose the output volumes and this is the auto connects settings and interesting ones are on the lab settings so video super resolution is basically the snapdragon game super resolution like the um, virtual desktop application has but it isn't applicable to all of the presets so this is only op operating on i believe smooth and sd it won't operate on the other two um, which is just upscaling to i believe it's going to be the 2560 so again, I can't use that. I've left it on, but it doesn't make obviously any difference. Um, if I save that, I'm going to have to normally restart Pico Connect just to, to see the effect. But Gamma as well, um, as a default, for me, I I swear it's, it's wrong. Um, a low Gamma introduces more compression artifacts, like it looks a little bit washed out. Um, 
and you could see sort of a uh, the color banding and um, camouflage sort of artifact in in any dark areas. So I've raised this up ever so slightly. That is going to be personal preference, and that's sort of why they put it there. Um, and controller sensitivity. I need to go into this and show you what's happening here. On the default 50%, um, for me, it makes the controllers feel re as responsive as standalone, which is great, but it in introduces overshoot. So if I want to keep my hands here and I stop them here when I'm doing this, the overshoot is basically they go inwards more than what my physical hands are doing. Um, so that's why they've gave this slider here to adjust that. Um, and again, that's going to be personal preference, whatever you want to, to use on that, whether you want a slightly more responsive feel, not as accurate, or you want the accurate by just lowering it back down to zero. So let's dive into this. And so let's go into Steam VR. And again, this is just going to be the, the normal launching of Steam VR, exactly as you normally expect. Same as Stream Assistant and Virtual Desktop. And I'll go into Half Life Alex. <laughs> So with the new free link specifically, um, stream the system was never actually supported and that also needed side loading. And the Pico Link wireless solution um, was pretty bad, as in the controllers didn't have the capacitive touch, um, same as the DisplayPort mode. DisplayPort mode has an excuse where it needs to actually have the service passed onto it. Um, and again, I don't know if ev Pico's ever going to do that. But the wireless side should have worked. Um, so Stream Assistant gave you the capacitive touch functionality of the controllers and it's the same with this Pico Connect. So the first thing I can do is show, I can press the thumbstick, my thumb moves down, I can press the face buttons, the A, A, B, and also the thumb rest on the side. So there's three capacitive touch points, or four if you include the thumbstick, plus your, plus your index, your trigger finger. Um, that's working normally. Um, it probably feels a little bit slow to respond, but um, Again, I don't know if that's normal. I'll have to go back to virtual desktop and see if that's, see if that's normal. Um, controller overshoot. I'm just going to use this wall as a quick example. So I'm going to stop my hands where that wall ends. And my hands are going past that wall. So they're almost clapping together, which isn't fantastic. If I go back into Pico Connect just by spamming the, the back button, go into the controller sensitivity, put that to zero, save, go back into Steam VR and uh, go back to my game and I'll do that again if I just square myself up you can see my hands are exactly where I'm stopping them so I'm not sure why anyone would like that at 50% or even 100 um, especially if you're playing Beat Saber it would feel more responsive but it would actually be overshooting past where your hands are stopping um, but at least it's an option that you can control now um, performance wise and image quality image quality definitely suffers here um, virtual desktop is still king if you're doing wireless streaming and again this is probably going to be exact same image as streaming the system which I, I was never really a fan of um, there's a lot of compression um, the resolution and en encode resolution is just not high enough so even though I'm at the ultra preset which is 2560 by 2560 per eye um, the encode resolution is about 60% of that and then the bit rate's 150. Um, if I go into my video settings here, on the global resolution, I'm actually set to 150%, which is 3132 by 3132, and it's still a low resolution to me, so I'm really compressed. So, again, I'm hoping they can improve that and offer more, because the way Pico connects is at the minute, um, it's very, very light, um, as in the ENCO time is around about normal for 90 frames a second but the decode time's got no problem I can record at the same time and it adds like 1 millisecond to the actual decoding stage according to their metrics it says 22 milliseconds don't compare that to anything else but this um, so virtual desktop counts it different um, stream assistant counted different Airlink counts it different this is literally just its own metrics here I'm not sure if that's going to include any vsync latency because a, a display port at 90 hertz makes about 23 milliseconds motion to photon. There's absolutely no way streaming and encoding with an extra 10 milliseconds transmit of 5 and decode of 6 is adding up to 22 milliseconds on top of a, a motion to photon reading. Um, but that's here or there. You should sort of understand that by now. Um, the other thing I want to cover is the 
if I get back into here. Controller bindings. Now, this has been a little bit better for me. If anyone's coming from Pico, they'd understand that some of the games are a bit um, hit and miss, um, especially streaming system where I had uh, the AppCheck EXE. You'd go into a game and it would jump your hands out of position, which was a bit annoying. It was doing that to try and make it better, but it was getting it wrong sometimes. Pico Connect has been a bit better from my library anyway. There might still be some games that are a bit iffy, but I've not had to rebind anything on my controllers as yet on Pico Connect, which is is nice for a change, not having to do any work. Um, but apart from that, um, if you would really want to use this, um, it's on you. I mean, I would personally recommend Virtual Desktop, but it is making improvements, um, especially being reworked from the ground up they have made some improvements obviously with the the latency this feels great even 90 hertz um and the controllers are obviously turned back down again to normal it feels fine um you're not going to notice anything different between this and virtual desktop with the hands um but the the actual um encoder and decoder um are getting away pretty lightly so if i go back into to windows and if i go back into task manager you can see the video encode is just having a it's, it's basically sleeping it's like 50 percent um so understandably the encode resolution isn't that much but even compared to virtual desktop the video encoder usage is a lot lower um but that goes hand in hand with this not having as uh having as good visual quality compared to virtual desktop so yeah it's it's quite light i'll be quite interested to see if i can get away with a really low end system with this especially at the lower presets um, because the, the video encode usage is actually really low. There's not much system resources from Pico Connect um, doing doing wireless streaming, which is um, something something I can actually praise them for coming from Airlink and stuff. So um, it is a nice solution. It's free. Um, there's no reason why you wouldn't have it, but there's a few things I would like to still see changed, and I'm going to do another in-depth dive into this on the Pico 4, which is obviously meant for, and go into a few of the... The different settings that you can tweak and can adjust um it's definitely not not been made easy this time stream assistant had a nice configuration file this is going to need some donkey work of um opening files reconfiguring and then saving them again so um i will have a crack at that and i'll get a new video up but yeah that's my basic first impressions of the pico connects solution on the new free link which is not supposed to be here but yeah if you want to give it a go side load it um, there will be APKs floating around online. It's only released today. I'll give it a week or so for someone to rip that. But yeah, it works. It's free. The controllers obviously work a little bit better now. Um, just don't expect the visual quality you get on your DisplayPort connection. And with that last statement, I will say this Pico Connect being the streaming solution does not have any DisplayPort functionality. So there's one thing to um, factor in if you are messing between your display port and streaming you can leave this installed use it for your wireless solutions pico link itself can still obviously be installed that's no problem and you can use your display port connection in this software i wouldn't bother with the wi-fi streaming solution here just use pico connect but if you are like me and you don't actually i can show this on the pico connect actually if you're like me you don't actually start the pico link software and just launch Steam VR through a little taskbar icon, um, which you can just go straight into Steam VR. There's no software to load up. Um, with Pico Connect installed, if you are juggling between them, Steam VR will obviously sometimes look to the wrong driver location. It will try load um, the Pico Connect driver instead of Pico Link. So that is the the only downside to having two lots of Pico software on your PC is confusing Steam VR in the case that you're not actually forcing the software first um, but again that's very display port dependent that's the only thing you can launch directly into steam vr is the display port mode so that's it i think i've covered everything i can i'll leave that with you if you're interested in trying it give it a try um, but just a heads up it's not going to be anywhere near display port but it does give you yet again more functionality out of its near free link um, for free so that's pretty cool cheers guys thanks for watching